and a big welcome back to you wherever you're tuned in from all around the world. Welcome to the Intel Extreme Masters Cologne. We are deep inside our grand final. That's right. It's Gambit Gaming 1, Fnatic 0. Gambit absolutely massacring Fnatic in game 1. That's according to Joe Miller anyway. Uh, we've got a question from the audiences, as we often do. And one of them today has been, why do I wear a tie? It's a good question. Um... I've been around for a long time in esports. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, I used to commentate back in 1863 when gaming started. And when we used to shoot in black and white. That's right, we used to have black and white TV and we used to show games. And uh, what would happen was we'd go through a tournament and we would steadily get uh, posher as the weekend went on. So we'd start in a pair of jeans and a t-shirt on a Thursday and by Saturday we'd be in a shirt and a pair of jeans and then on Sunday, full suit, nice bow tie or a tie. And that's where the tradition comes from. So it's been going on for about 150 years. We are about to get back into our grand final. I know Joe's already sniggering over there at the old jokes. Yeah, I can see them, Joe Miller. But it is time to get back to our grand final. Can Gambit Gaming win yet another Intel Extreme Masters by claiming their second map in a row? Or are Fnatic going to make a comeback as they're so famous for doing with x Packer coming back at the back door? Let's find out. Our grand final continues. Joe Miller, lead the way. Cool story, bro. Let's get into map number two here and see if Fnatic can bring this one back. Game number one did not look good for them whatsoever. You can see the yellow star. Not a bit shock of a, at all. Got a bit of a sweat on there. It is, uh, I think, warm in the studio. Uh, Reckless looking a little bit out of it, to be honest. In fact, it's going to be the same as we go along all the line, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I mean, not a fun time for Fnatic game. Well, I mean, one. if you just got blown up twice by AP Malphite in just one pop, I wouldn't be looking too happy either. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, he didn't stand much of a chance, did he, against Alex? And then we see Gambit, who are also looking really focused. We saw a lot of laughing and joking from them so far. So I'm in very high spirits. Absolutely. Uh, certainly have played absolutely fantastic. There is Eddie. It's good to see him back in the Gambit colors, honestly. Good to see him back here in Europe. He, he spent a little while in America, and sure as hell, he now speaks full English interviews. It's great. Yeah, definitely. Some imp improved on that mm. side. I mean, even see Diamond just sometimes sharing his insight in, in English, and it, it's a lot better than a lot of us expected initially. And it was interesting, actually, Alex's interview. And he said, you know, the the team has moved on another six months. Six months is a long time for these young guys, and it actually is. And you've got to remember that when you look at basically all of the players in all of pro tournaments. You're only young guys. Yeah, exactly. Like six months for all these young folk. It's de definitely a long <laughs> time. You're one of the older <laughs> ones these days, mate. Sorry. It's almost time for me to retire, almost at 23. So I just hope I have one good, one more good year oh, in me. Oh, same thing just a step to waste. Now, who's the oldest one between Europe and America? I'm not too sure. Well, it won't be me, at least. I'm happy with no. that. There's probably stuff Is, is older. Pete older than you? I believe Pete is actually older than me, older and wiser. So Pete may be up there. So he's 24. Oh, I, I find it, it's great that I feel so young in this lineup uh, here at Intellectually Master Cologne. We Thanks, just heard mate. story time from Paul Red Eye Challoner from the good old days uh, when he was young many, many moons ago. You're knocking on as well. No comment there. I think you're fine. <laughs> old is more about experience, I feel, but unfortunately, um, we've been around the business the same amount of time, so I can't even pull that card. Yeah, exactly. You're out You're out of things to say there. <laughs> uh, well, let's get into the serious business here because we are going to get into bans and picks for game number two. Gambit will be moving over onto the blue side, gives them first ban, first pick, and I can tell you, Nidalee is the first one out. Fnatic taking out Kha'Zix here for a second time in a row. So what will they go with? Will it be standard stuff? Cassidy, of course, being taken away from Peke. I think everybody that watched Worlds has learned that you can't let Peke have Cassidy. But Gambit are going to know it more than anyone because they've played against it so many times. It used to be Twisted Fate that uh, was taken away from him as well. Yeah, it's always like the flavor of the mm. half month or month or a couple of months, especially ever since the Cassidy uh, play on SK there came out or wherever it was, the back door. <laughs> It doesn't seem a flavor of a month, but it's more like a flavor of a couple of years from now. And I don't think everybody will remember that. And Becca just, yeah, he'll jump away with Cassidy. And I don't think Alex will like it when he jumps away. He wants to nicely close so he can one more combo him to death. 
While we're talking about Katowice, I forgot to mention this earlier on. The winner of this game, the winner of the Intel Extreme Masters Clone Pro Tournament, will receive a direct invite for the Intel Extreme Masters World Championships, which will be at the Spodek in Katowice once again. A fantastic stadium that was incredibly full and amazing last time around. So if you're in the area, you should definitely check that out. Uh, Karma was a final ban here, actually, for Gambit. We've seen that uh, being played, actually, by both teams, funnily enough. I didn't think uh, that I'd be saying much about that from Karma. At least the final ban along with Annie from Fnatic and the picks are coming quick so let's run through and they left Chivana up and we're gonna see that here for Gambit this time around. Renekton and Aatrox this time though going over to Fnatic. Yeah and just to, it shows like Chivana is such a contested pick. I'm, I'm not too sold. Maybe maybe uh, Fnatic will have a way to deal with it. They do get the Renekton really strong dual champion early as well as Aatrox on Cyanide's really good at a show that Rose is just a real phenomenal player and he's like more carry style junglers. I didn't like the Nocturne. I like what Cyanide does with Aatrox. Combine that with Renekton, they might even go for like stun and knock up combos and they may be able to break the pacing that Gamut was doing last game in the early game. Well, we'll see how it works out. Least unavailable. We'll see where the diamond goes with that. He did pull it out earlier today, which was Great to see in itself up against Cloud9 against Meteos. Might even just go for Shivala jungle, throw back a Yuriko. Mm. He was playing it, leaves Darien with another attack. Gangplank back in the... Uh, <laughs> might as well Plash out as well, just yep. get them all. I still remember the Darien Gangplank, which was not quite as successful. 0-5 uh, in like 10 minutes because he <laughs> kept teleporting back to lane. But who knows, like the new revamped Darien might actually just pull it off. Oh, next pick Foxy coming Darien. up. Proxy, Proxy Garion. Darien, no problem for him. I would like Singed on Garion. On Darien rather, I would like to see how that one goes. Well, it's going to be a thing of the past once 3.14 gets in, that's for sure. We're not going to see any more of this farming between lane business. That's what I'm feeling anyway. But Thresh and Lucian coming in. Flavor of the month, Lucian, so far. And that's something Zen on the Stoic will be happy with. It's a champion that he designed himself. Speaking of that combo earlier on, Ash Zyra. Yeah, pretty much forced into that combo. Annie being out of there. Uh, there's mm -hmm. definitely a Sona still there. Roughly the same as Sona, Zyra, both provide poke and AoE ultimates. Uh, not really... Quite can go for Leona. Not too easy to play against Shivana, not too easy to play against Lucian. Thresh, not a lane counter, but he is able to cancel, cancel the Zenith Blade from Leona. Basically, being forced into Zyra for sure. And then, yeah, any long generic ranged AD to fit with that. Uh, Zyra, Caitlyn, Zyra, Ash as well. Zyra, Caitlyn, a little more siege potential. Zyra, Ash, the, the classical utility combo actually coming over from Korea and NA. I know Cloud9 pl played that a lot in their split. Speaking of Korean NA, We've not really seen Nunu the tall this weekend yet. He's pretty much the non-stop pick. Bot. Yeah, we saw him once at Hercule, but we actually or twice yeah. even, but we barely saw him. I mean, let's mm. face it, man. We, he was picked, but he wasn't having the mo biggest impact in that game. Mm. And it, we could definitely see the weaknesses of Nunu, and you need to exploit that with a Caitlyn. And the only time it was really affected, I believe, was when it was combined with AD uh, attack speed steroid combined with a needle heal for giving massive damage or massive uh, attack speed damage output on those turrets in the, with a Caitlyn, but we can't really see that in this composition. So let's have a look then for Gambit. It's not going to be Teemo. Oh, Edward, how I've missed you. <laughs> there's, some, there's some parts we like yeah. and some parts we... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Could do with a fully revamped Edward. Uh, he's still got some of his traits that he left us with. Um, Ziggs, will that be picked up here for Alex? Evelyn as well, so it's going to be Evelyn jungle here for Gambit. Uh, well, mm. with obviously uh, Darian taking that Shivan in the top lane, and we're going to see Alex H playing the Ziggs. Unless, yeah, I think that's a, a right assessment. Unless uh, Diamond just learned how to Zig jungle, and we see even with him and Shivana top, but I doubt that. But I wouldn't Never put it past. It I wouldn't put it past him. I mean, AOE for the camps. I mean, that all makes sense. That is a pretty hard counter to Ziggs in the mid. If he's just get picked in there. If it comes to a straight duel, yeah, I agree, because the damage output immediately and, and being able to jump around. We did see, however, how Alpeke manhandled uh, Alex Ish early in that game. Continuous harass coming out, and I mean, the Fizz only has a jump every so often, so you can only dodge one bomb, but like Alex in this case will be throwing up about three or four at him every time, so one out of four is not <laughs> enough to stay alive. Thinking about the straight counter whizzing through a bunch of champions. It was see how that works out, but Evelyn. Evelyn's been banned away from Diamond the majority of this tournament. This is a jungler that he was known for God, way back in Season 2 Finals, uh, up semi-finals up against Taipei Assassins. Yeah, he does He does add it really well with him, or sometimes he, he misses the synchronization with his team. I remember us playing against, I think it was European Regional, actually it wasn't the Regionals, it was in the end of LCS. He would flank us a little too early, we'd catch him out and then turn on the rest of his team. But this is a different gamut showing up. They have really great synergy, and with that, imagine there's a Shivana lurking on your left, and Evelyn on your right, and they're both jumping at the same time. AoE knockback, AoE slow. 
you're already down to half HP and there's only two people in the fight. So definitely a very, very menacing combo. Add a few bombs to that and I don't think even you think Genja has to play anymore. Yeah, final choice for Fnatic, leaving that mid player and uh, that mid champion to last, picking up Ari. And this is the the changed Ari as well. We should probably mention as well with the damage ap amplification on the on the charm. Yeah, definitely Ari being more reliant on landing that charm for people that don't know. She gets increased damage if she lands a charm on all her magic abilities rather, and it basically forces Ari not to be just an assassin. Try and land a charm. If it works, I'll kill him. Otherwise, I'll kill him anyways. It's definitely more relied on that charm. But we've seen Peke. I mean, he if anybody's going to land these kill shots, it's probably him. Well, we're going to find out here. We can see that Diamond just looks stalled by something. Not sure what that was all about. But he's going to be playing the Evelyn. And we actually saw uh, against Cloud9, they banned Evelyn in both games against him. Or oh, in, in three games, actually, it was, because it finished 2-1. Yeah, definitely respectable uh, opponent. It's really hard to play against an Evelyn. I mean, you have to change the entire mindset of the team. It's no longer just the same start, even in items. I, speaking as a support, pink wards go up in value against an Eve because only green wards are efficient if you place them on the camps and see Eve, Eve doing them and then rotating away from them or very near to camps when she's still not invisible. Otherwise, pink wards is what you need. And actually seeing Eddie talking pretty heavily with the team there, I remember speaking to, say, Spontex, etc., when they moved into that team, basically saying how Gambit effectively don't have tactics going into a game. You guys, do you have, like, a set plan against these teams? Or is it like Gambit, they just react to the situation? It varies. Some Sometimes you think you really need a set at level 1 or you have a few possibilities. Against Gambit, for example, if you know that they like doing the Genja edit thing where, or the Genja and support thing, like actually, last season, where they would two-man contest above, you could counter it or predict it. For example, against those teams that fall into patterns, you can adjust to level one, but they might just shift out of the pattern, but it looks like they're going in with five people here. Not messing around, are they? Fnatic moving straight Almost into that got a ward. Ah, they have to use a pink ward in the end for that one, though. But still fine, because they're playing against Evelyn. It still adds some value, and it even allows Pekka to be safe against the Evelyn. Yeah, that's Star here, just getting it ward off towards that blue buff bush as well. And with that, they are going to back straight away back out of things. And no pink one on Eddie's side. You'd usually expect uh, Gambit to ca at least carry one to counter ward whatever you place in their jungle, especially when they're playing with Eve. You can expect pink wards coming out, and a pink for a pink is always worth it when you're playing Evelyn. And speaking of starts, Diamond starting with a brilliant spot. Yeah, he's been actually known to do that on Evelyn, but he got... got Oh, he's dead. Oh, nope. he might actually need it as well. He and he's gonna go down. It's actually Ash that picks that one up. Great start here for Fnatic. Reckless picking up that first kill, and he seemed a little bit startled there. Diamond caught from around the corner, and that is not what they had in mind here that's, for level. That's one. what it was. That's what the reaction was. He sees two minutes in advance, and he was like, "Oh, I've been caught." <laughs> <laughs> well, if he knew, he probably wouldn't have gone there. But maybe he saw himself caught in another life, in another different place. Just, I actually have no idea what, what went through him. Maybe he thought Fnatic would be starting on his blue buff, and Evelyn is very reliant on a blue buff, especially with that Billions potion, as you guys pointed out. It basically makes it almost binary. He needs one out of two blue buffs on the map. Oh. Well, here we go. Gambit uh, starting off the blue buff. Blue buff has already been picked up by Cyanide as well down this bottom lane. It is going to be the duo lanes both up against each other in this bottom lane. And what do we see? I mean, this is the Zyrash is a classic combo we've seen. Lucian Thresh, fairly new. Yeah, well, basically, the problem is Lucian and Thresh get early to lane. Lucian has insane push potential just because popping one Q can annihilate a wave. But put against that Yellow Star and and, and Reckles on the Ash Zyrash combo, insane push potential as well. Both waves will just get blown up immediately. And I think actually. I'm giving it to Fnatic first to hit level 2 and start poking out. Yeah, that uh, Longsword actually added in after that first blood went the way of Reckless there. At the early levels, kill onto Diamond, always a nice start for them. Diamond has since recovered from that early game knock though, and he's well on his way on his jungle path at this point, on his red buff already. This top lane, Darian versus Soaz. Shivana here for Darian, a champion which pretty much ro they rose to fame with uh, back in the old days as Moscow 5, you know. Uh, we'll see how his, how his play style with the Shivana has changed over the time. Yeah, definitely we'll interesting to see that evolution, but if you look at what actually Fnatic did on the map early, they spent so many wards trying to scout for the jungle, they left with zero wards on bottom against an invisible Eve that they knew that started on blue. Mm. Blue into red, where do you go? You go bottom. Even though they had the push advantage, they've been pacing around near the tower for about 35 seconds or now. I've been monitoring, they can't even see yes, just because that's how much like 
pressure Eve is putting onto you, and that's why you need those pink ones across the map. Look, they can't even get the CS. Diamond is just poking in the bottom, and this gives Cyanide. Well, he needs to make a play, but Alex just playing safe. Speaking of making plays, Reckless goes down. Genja was caught out there. Sorry, picks up the kill, and that was Diamond going in. Didn't quite catch the side of it because, well, we saw Cyanide going in. They're going to go on towards Yellow Star as well. The hate spikes doing work. Have they got enough to try and catch on towards him? Cyanide will come in. One more hate spike will come out. Diamond gets it with the red. I think Cyanide actually killed the support there by basically letting the hate spike cost through because no way Diamond was in a range there. Nice attempt zoning him out, but it doesn't work. Really well played and knowing the limits of his champion by Diamond there. And even though we saw them pacing back and forth from bottom, knowing Eve could come, it was just not enough to prevent the death. Reckless actually died with barriers still up. I wonder if that was perhaps like the pressure getting to him. That probably he should have used that in this game. You definitely expect that. And we see now them coming back down into this bottom lane. Uh, Aatrox, obviously Cyanide will be joining in from that one as well. They want to make sure they're safe down there. And Rex's flash is still down from level one. And you often see that. Yeah, sure, you get that first button, you get far ahead and it was nice and dandy, but then you know it's like you burn summoners and this is a great team like Gambit. They will punish you for burning those summoners. Probably Diamond even just flashed on him and killed him. Oh, wow. That satchel, absolutely perfect. Knocks him right into Diamond. They make short work of that one. They have to invest in pink wards. They need that vision of Diamond. Yeah, I mean, Diamond gets first blood. You know what he gets? He gets just gets angry and he starts ganking you even harder. <laughs> just don't the, mess the problem with is everything, everything that that's that blue pot is now paid for itself. Diamond has got first blood, two assists. He's suddenly going to go back and go, thanks guys, I, I am rolling now on Evelyn. And that's that's the only thing you can stop with Evelyn. You, you just stop him get going and you're generally going to win the game. But I mean, when Evelyn gets going, it's scary. He's approaching level six very soon. As I say that, he pings <laughs> level six already. Reckles is still level three. Zyra is still level three. What the hell is Diamond doing this game? Oh, look at that. The paint ward in the bottom brush just timed out. As Diamond comes down there. There's no pink ward in that bottom brush. There's one in the top side, and Cyanide is actually coming in from this one. We're going to see Diamond getting involved in this one. Yellow Star going very, very low. Where is the ultimate arrow? Diamond is going to put down so much damage. It's a double kill in the end for Genja. They're going to keep going flash from Genja. Not quite what they were looking for in the end, but it's a two for one. And this could have gone even better. I bet Edward is basically hating on, on Diamond a little bit because he didn't click the lantern. If you don't click the lantern, the shield's not going to come to the Thresh. One of the most annoying parts of playing Thresh. But it doesn't matter. Two for one. And even forcing the last member out of lane, Gambit in full control of this game. Diamond is scary right now. He's actually the highest level on the board. He's about to hit seven when he comes out as well. Alex Hitch and Peke just about trying to keep up. Speaking of level six, Alex Hitch has hit that as well. And you can see he's actually zoning Peke back a little bit on Auric. And yeah, he's putting so much pressure in mid and his jungle is basically doing filling the gap. If you have so much pressure in mid, jungle can focus on top and on the bottom. And he's basically annihilating bottom lane every chance he gets. And this is just beautiful pressure play coming out of the Gambit lineup. And I don't even know what Fnatic is going to do. Already a 2k gold deficit. Yeah, and the scary thing as well for you know, the likes of Peke in that mid lane is the whole just the threat of having an Evelyn that's doing so well. Yeah, you've got one pink ward down, but one pink ward is not going to be able to uh, spot you every single time out from this. And we see it again, Diamond using pink wards of his own to make sure that his paths are clear. I mean, Eddie's flash is coming up. They have two pink wards. Yeah, if Eve walks into the lane, they can see her coming. But um, this time, if he throws out the lantern, Ma walks into max leash range, lantern pops and Eddie flashes forward and then Eve flashes forward. That's like a double entire lane distance they can cover in, a, in, in one second. And pink wards are not even going to help you against that. Genja goes in for a trade. Genja trading with Yellow Star is going to poke. Look at that. They're both lying. That's got to be a juicy target for surely Alex Hitch. He's coming down already. He's got that Mega Bomb. They're also going for the blue as well, just off to the side. They have a pink ward on the blue as well, so they know exactly what has happened. Alex is waiting with that bomb. He's thrown it too early. They pulled out just at the right time. And actually, it's not over just yet. Diamond actually moving up towards that one. Oh, he gets caught by the charm there. And that's half of his health gone already. Oh, missed there by Peke, trying to get himself over the wall. Yeah, def definitely good pressure coming out from Gambit here again. They're forcing them up. <laughs> the pair of you, honestly, you're it's like working with children. This is what I got to work with, ladies and gentlemen. This is what I've got to work with. They're both in fits of laughter right now. Gambit right now, though, are 2,000 gold in the lead. 5-2 in kills and 1-1-4 for Diamond. <laughs> 
3 0 1. Get a grip, Nate. Get a grip, people. So, come Diamond on. coming in here. Ultimate actually using Yellow Star's dead. He's not going to escape that one. Flay comes on to Reckless as well. He's going to fall. And where's the kill actually going to come in? Diamond taking a lot of damage, but Genja gets that one. That's another two kills. Cyanide coming around, but he's not got a chance to get in there to finish off. Good guy, Diamond, sharing the spoils of war with Genja. 4 0 and 2. And you know what? He invested in three Dorans. I mean, many things have changed in Gambit, but Genja is still the same. <laughs> Genja is still the same. Bomb's still coming through. Peke, how are you going to sidestep this one? The super mega explosive massive range. The bomb is not available. Instead, Peke's going to turn it back around. He's got the ignite ticket. He play. will take down Alex Itch. That's the only thing you can do, flash forward and just kill him because it uses all of his last yeah. cooldowns and really good turnaround. Cyanide comes out of the blood well. He's going to go down one more shot. Well, no, and he flashes for it, steals it. Peke goes down to Diamond. This is just rolling into destruction derby from Gambit. And as that happened, Genja was almost near the brink of death and just Edward saved him with a lantern and got him out of there. Else Yellowstar would have closed him and killed him. Really good team play there on bottom. Eddie and Genja refining that synergy once again. Look at Darian as well. This is Darian of old with this Shivana moving into the enemy jungle whilst in this top lane. So as is actually on his turret hammering away, but he'll be quite fine with that. He's picked up the red buff, and now he can put down some real pressure on towards Soaz. He's got a vamp scepter in there for the sustain. Ultimate used out of Soaz. Nice force there from uh, Darian. They may lose, uh, well, they're not going to lose this bottom turret, but there's going to be a lot of damage coming out on Yeah, it. but look, every step Reckles takes, he's taking one back as well because he's so scared of Eve randomly showing up. I mean, they have to respect the zone. They might get that tower, but it's too little too late, probably. 403 Genja is gone back to that triple Doran's blade and because of that early uh, I guess he wants to keep this advantage going that they've, that they've already been building themselves up. I mean all it takes oh. a good CC combo might be good for Fnatic here. Oh, you were thinking Darian's back to normal. <laughs> Is he back to feeding? No, because he can walk away from this one. He's already at level 9. I want a quick mention for Gambit here. We've been talking about MVP. Who's building a love? Darian's been playing fantastic. Ginger's been playing fantastic. Diamond yeah. has played stunning every single game. And again, he's at 3-1-5. Yes, yeah. Fnatic still stands a small chance if they survive these repetitive gangs coming out, but I'm not even sure if they can. No, I see that Diamond using his ultimate in there. Alex actually going aggressive from this one. Slow goes down. Has he got the damage to finish things off? Not really at this point. Got the workings of that Athene's on Holy Grail and decides not to use his ultimate moving forward. But since Diamond is actually still hanging around there, they might go for a second lock in on Peke. We've seen Gamut get too overconfident and overreaching in the past with this amount of lead. And Fnatic is definitely a team that can punish it. If Peke gets rolling with Ari, he can start assassinating people. So he's not entirely over, but they're definitely in control of this game. Look how scared Reckles is. He has to pace back and forward constantly, not even controlling the lane. I'd be scared of Eddie as well, honestly. He's on Thresh. He's throwing out those hooks. He's not going to land it, though. Reckless flashed at the right time. His tower is so low in that bottom lane. You can see Sino already heading back down there. Darian is toying with Soaz now. Darian is a scary beast when he's this confident. The difference between this game and the last one was at least that actually Sina is putting a lot of pressure. He's left and right attempting to counter gang. Oh, this could be bad news in the bottom lane. Genji are going to get locked up by everything they can throw off. He, he took the lantern, but this time it wasn't enough. The ignite, I think it was in the end. Uh, no, it wasn't. It was reckless Traveling auto, auto attack. attack that killed him, but Diamond's coming down. Where's the ulti coming in? There's a bomb from Ziggs. Diamond picks up the kill anyway, and they're going to keep play. the pressure. Cyanide low. Yellow Star's dead. He's not going to escape that. Alex with the last hop of that water balloon going to get the kill. And they lose one man, but they pick up two for the price at the same time. And this is what you guys were saying earlier about the Ziggs. He's roaming from mid lane to the other lane, sacrificing tower HP, but turning a kill around. And basically, he got torn apart. There's Ziggs bomb landing at the same time as the hook connected. And really well played by Gavin. And at the same time, from top lane, Darian's rotating Ooh. mid and even doing really mean stuff to it's Peke. Dude, some serious mean stuff. Peke is realizing the situation. He may be able to throw the charm out, but he's just buying time for his team. Oh, to get the drag. The Ignite's got him. The Ignite has got him. Darian comes around, gets himself an easy kill. Fnatic are flustered here. Everything that could possibly be going wrong for them after getting first blood at level one, which is probably the best thing that can go right Unless for you. Unless you piss off Diamond. Yeah, that, well, that's it. You've angered him. You've angered him now. And now what do you do? I mean, Genji's back in top, split pushing to his merry own self like he used to. I don't know where Eddie's gonna go. Is he gonna refine his AD carry or is, is he gonna roam with the rest of his team? Well, we heard Reckless earlier in the interview saying that Genji is the best AD carry in Europe, whether he meant it or not. It is a 4-1-4 score from Genji once again. He had a fantastic first game, fantastic second game once again. And 
Gambit, this is this is a return to former glory right now. Here at the Intel Extreme Masters in Cologne, they are smashing the opposition. They destroyed Cloud9 earlier on. And Fnatic, well, it's going to be all over again. Reckless, you're not getting out of this one. The hook will be dodged, but frankly, there's too much damage now coming out from Gambit. If only Zyra had a lantern. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he could do with probably a little bit more like four summoner spells, barriers that he could put on his own team. Uh, yeah, just not going well here. After game number one, um, we saw the tweet from Carmack earlier saying Fnatic look rattled. And it doesn't, the, the break in between games doesn't seem to have number one slowed Gambit down or really gained that much confidence back after. <laughs> I thought it was going to be different after getting that first blood in there, but it just hasn't. And usually if you look at the stats, the first team to get the first tower and the first kill in the game generally does really well, one would say, but yeah, obviously not against the Russians. Oh, Edward down in the bottom lane. He's going to die from this no, one, or is no, he? He's no, he's not. Cyanide gets a blood well pop. Here comes Diamond. Cyanide is a dead man. He will fall to that one. And now they chase in Genja rooted under the, the tower. tower. He's got Shit. enough. Yeah, one, one hit would have done that one as Peke and Alex Hitch going to go head to head. The charm actually landing both down to about half HP. What Peke's got no mana left here. Alex has not got his ultimate available. That was used earlier on. There's low health pings Who's going that? somewhere Diamond on the map. Yeah, Peke is probably dead from this one. Misses the charm. Flash over the wall from Diamond. That's oh, another one. 7-1-6. Seven, seven, one, six. Six. Wow. <laughs> Synergy casting right there. <laughs> One man is not enough to describe the awe that we feel for Diamond Pucks right now. He's playing so damn well. It's an awe that Meteos felt earlier on, and, you know, he's been had his praises sung in North America, but right now, Diamond, this is a Diamond of old right now, and it's just... This is a return to former glory. I feel that they needed those couple of months apart to realize the amazing synergy that Gambit have got when Eddie rejoins there. They just seem to be all playing, having fun. And oh, top lane. Actually, so has going in. And forget that, because in the bottom dead. lane, Diamond is killing Reckless. It's something you hate as an AD carry, as an Evelyn appears. An 816 Evelyn, there's just nothing you can do about it's it. almost no counterplay, and it's actually really nice to see Diamond playing so well. He's on the top of his game, and I can't wait how to see that transition into the next patch that's coming out. Jungle completely revamped, and who do you want shaping the meta game that is the jungle than a Diamond proxy in full form? Yeah, probably the most innovative jungler out there. <laughs> Perfect for him as Peke just dodging that hook as Edward comes in from the side. This is going to be a turret takedown soon, at least. Maybe not with this wave, but they will be taking that one before long. Cyanide actually coming in. They're going to try and make a play onto Genja and Alex. It's so ass coming down as well. They're going to try and manhandle these two as Alex actually going in, realizes all of a sudden, okay, I'm in trouble from this one. He's going to go down with Cyanide picking up the kill. I'm dead. Press R. That was simply all that was. There's no way to analyze that one. The calling is available for Genja if he needs it. He has got the entire team out. coming on towards him. Can he get out? But Diamond comes in. Will he be able to land that ultimate? Get himself a big shield. He can turn this one back around. You can see Eddie coming in. He's feeling fancy in his chance. He throws out the hook. Doesn't line anyone. Darian comes in around the side. It's a pincer move, but it's a pincer move that may be successful. Peke's burning. He's going down. Next target's going to be Cyanide. Jumps away. Good grasping route from Yellowstar. That's going to stop the attack dead. And yeah, we see about 23 kills in this game already and 1-1 one, one into turrets. Always something crazy when Gamut plays. Uh, oh, they're going between turrets now. Are we going to see this one or not? <laughs> because we're going to see Soaz in sorts of trouble. Genja managing to catch on towards Soaz. Where are you going to run, lads? You're not going to be able to get away from this one. Reckless is going to get focused on by Genja. That's actually going to be a pretty close fight. But Soaz, he's in all sorts of trouble. It's not close when Diamond comes along, that's for sure. 9 one 7 Shivana ultimate across. Soaz is going to go down. There's not even a lantern for you because it's Eddie coming in to get the kill. And you have to pity the poor camera guy having to follow this because Gambit is just killing them. I have them. no pity for him, so <laughs> what do you mean? He's Gam done this all year. Gambit is killing them so quick that it almost leaves no time to switch the screen and we're basically going from one gray screen to another because Fnatic is dropping like flies. This is... I use the word massacre for game number one and... Uh, well, what do you do I might now? have to bust something else out for this one because it needs an adjective so strong again as we see the bomb coming into middle. Peke loses half of his health, and guess what? Rest of the team are here. There's Diamond oh. focusing in on towards Cyanide. He's going to jump over the wall, but Diamond pops a W, gets slowed down, but he's going to keep chasing on through. Peke using his ultimate here to escape. Cyanide's flashed over into the blue buff, and now Yellowstar, you might feel safe on that turret, but I guarantee you you're not. 
Look at Diamond. He's gone straight. He really wanted that kill. He's hunting for it. The middle tower is in all sorts of perilous oh, trouble. Reckless. Oh, Reckless. Oh, Reckless. You may have had a great duel with Doublelift earlier, but you're not winning the fight with Diamond. That's for damn sure. He's going to be 2-8-1, Reckless, now, because Diamond 10-1-7. By that logic, Diamond confirmed for best AD carry. Double best AD carry worlds, <laughs> that's for sure. Look at this in the middle. Boom! Another headshot comes in. Yellow Star rattled as he bounces around the base. At this point, the only place where Fnatic is safe is their own fans, and I'm not even too sure about that one. Anymore. I'm not sure either. Cyanide here underneath the inhibitor turret. He's getting back up on a box, and he's going straight back down six foot under in a box. There's a turret going to be focused in from this one. The inhibitor itself is going to go down. Gambit might win this before Fnatic even have a chance to surrender. Yeah, this is this is a 19-minute game. That, you can't analyze that crap. I'm not going to gonna let you talk, because <laughs> simply put, this is a just, I don't know, genocide maybe is probably the only word I can feel for it, because frankly, they are 12,000 gold ahead. 20 minutes not even approached yet, and there's just there's no way of ever coming back from this game. And I was about to say what's left to analyze here. I think my job here is done. So, Crepo, <laughs> my work here is done. In this scenario, how do you how do you come back? How do you come back? Is, I mean, Another there, week? This is, is there an actual <laughs> possibility for Gambit any way to come back in this? I mean, uh, for Fnatic, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. Gambit is probably coming back in this game, I believe. But yeah, this, I mean, Oh. I'd like to say yes. The Colin still does nothing, even when you're fed. <laughs> <laughs> Confirmed Tickle. by Genjad. Even though he's 717, Sowers didn't even need feel the need to pop. Dominus finally will go down to basic attacks. On a serious note, Gamut is all relatively squishy, except for Gat Darian. If they manage to go and send him in one by five, well, uh, one by one, until the five men are dead, yeah, maybe. But even then, I think Fnatic is gonna burn through. This is just Gambit being too strong today. Yeah, they are a country mile ahead of this one. We've just hit 20 minutes, and there's a 11 and a half thousand gold lead. And look at Diamond. He's got that Oracle on him here. So not only is he being an annoyance, he's clearing out your wards as you go. Not that Yellow Star really has many to put down at this point. That's how far they are behind. Um, yeah. And he was on his own there against Peke, and he was throwing out the hook. <laughs> he's like, don't worry, you guys, I've got this. Oh, they're going in again. Look at this. Diamond getting pulled over by the Lantern, oh, and Cyanide is going to jump on top of Darien. Got cancelled there. And he's dead. Yeah, he's dead. Peke's Alex is coming around on towards Peke as well. Peke with no mana is just going to have to escape this one. Top turret's gone down to Genja. <laughs> Alex using the pack to launch himself in there. Diamond finds him, has to use his Spirit Rush to get away and dodges straight in towards the Pick bomb. Pick your poison. Who are you going to kill? Well, it's it's Reckless again finding Diamond. Oh, can he run? Can he run? He used the ultimate. He's going to get away with this one, I feel. He's finally going to escape. Oh. Yellow Star is a no. Darian gets himself a kill. They are toying with the opposition. They've come into this tournament with big smiles on their faces. Nobody, but nobody has even got close to stopping them. We saw them against the red. We thought maybe that's just the red. They, you know, they're up against a team that's weaker. They came up against Cloud9. They went 2-0 again. They're up against Fnatic. It's another demolition, another 2-0. I don't think anybody has told Gamma that there's no prize for most KDA until they refuse to finish the game and just kill Fnatic over and over and over. Darren showing his best dance moves there and, uh, yeah. I mean, I'd like to analyze this game <laughs> further on, but I think I think my work here is done. He's, he's tanking the entire team and not even got his hands on the keyboard. That's not good. That's not good at all. And it is going to be 29-5, Joe. Yeah. What a performance Gambit have put in. We shouldn't really have questioned. It's Gambit and the Intel Extreme Masters. Yeah, they are the masters of the Intel Extreme Masters, and they are going to take down the first Nexus. Sorry, can't see Fnatic being able to stop them here. I think Gambit will stop themselves to hunt for kills at this point rather than Fnatic stopping in that happen 603 from the top lane 11 110 out of the jungle the nexus is already down to half hp but they want more kills the bomb goes over towards the fountain alex trying to keep them out there but it is finished and gambit gaming win the intel extreme masters cologne in two very one-sided games here in this final best of three this one ending 30 to 5 in kills the gold He's not even close. Turrets, of course, aren't close either. Well, let's just run down the scoreboard here for Gammy because they deserve this. 6 0 3 for Darien. Zero deaths. Zero deaths. Again. Zero deaths it's again the for Darien. Final. It's the anti Darien we're seeing here. <laughs> I think <laughs> they found a double that's <laughs> just as good at the game and He's brought him in swagger. for this. He's still got this. He'll always have that. 11 110 Diamond Procs.
proving to us why Cloud9 may be banned that heavily now against him, not wanting to deal with that. Alex had a relatively quiet game, all things said. 3 2 6, 8 1 7 for Genja, who's seemed to have reinvented his playstyle, his positioning, everything. He's looked like a, a, a much improved AD carry this game, and uh, sorry, this tournament, I should really say. And Edward back on European soil with his old mates in Gambit. First tournament together, first win under their belt. He played 2 1 15 on the thresh. Overall, Gambit stunning. Edward back, Gambit back. What do you know? They have a couple of weeks rest after Worlds, after all the LCS season, and they just perform immac immac immaculate. Indeed. Immaculate is the word I was after. Thank you very much, Grappo. I just, I just wonder, like, if they can keep drawing this line further into the LCS, or whether they, they have, will have the recurring issues again with all the travel. But I sure hope so because this Gambit is looking really strong and just showed why they went to Worlds twice in a row, and they just top-notch team. They are actually the most successful European team. That is that is a fact. They have won countless tournaments. You know, there's a lot of teams, and I hate to say this, that have got second places, third places. Why, but, why do you hate to say that? Do but you Gambit... <laughs> you know what you, you know what a talking lot about. of tournaments, that's for sure. Don't worry, guys, you'll always have Dream Act. Exactly. The one moment. <laughs> the one moment. But this is the Gambit that dominated that, you know, this is the kind of dominance that they showed throughout that one. I mean, I did not expect to see this. Nobody did. Them. No, let's face no. it. No. Who did? And anybody that did was probably just overshooting like their reach because how can you predict this? Yes, when I didn't practice it hard and then maybe an excuse or, or maybe it can't be used to diminish the, the performance Gambit pushed out here, like great synergy. We saw we saw a great Gambit, Gambit of old in some aspect, but we also saw a Gambit of new, like way better synergy between Genja and, and Edward and way better play by Genja overall, way better map awareness. He wasn't just being that Ash again that was split pushing all of a sudden on the top lane. No, he was where he had to be, played his fights correct, wait until his moment, remember the 4v2, like Genja, like show going on in that match against Cloud9, and he just played so well. Yeah, I mean, look at who they've beat, Fnatic, who were, you know, spring and summer split champions. And at World Finals. Cloud9 dominated North America, or also at World Finals, they ended up knocking each other out. Like, this is, I, I'm sure Gambit are like, why did we ever let Eddie go? Why did we let that go in the first place? Maybe they needed that. Maybe that break that they've had has brought them back together with a completely new fire burning inside them to win more tournaments. You need to let go to realize what you're missing. Joe. Well, that's exactly what Gen just said. You know, he said it in a tweet himself. He's like, maybe I need realize, to realize you've got to treat your support well. And suddenly they've adapted the pro play. And Eddie, Edward, when he came back, he said, you know, the problems that were there have gone away. Is it Genja's aggression? I think I think that's a, a lesson we can learn, and I think that's just a closing Look after note. your supports. Look after your support, guys. Treat them nicely, like make them pancakes or whatever you want. Uh, mine with syrup, please. And uh, yeah, that's basically what you need to do. Well, a fantastic performance. Eighteen and a half thousand dollars here for Gamit. Not a bad weekend out for them. I, I mean, wonder. two incredible. Uh, I say two incredible wins. Three incredible wins, technically, because they beat the Red in game number one, and that was our real big question after seeing mm. that was, was the Red just a, uh, a an opponent that couldn't technically match Gambit on all fronts? But honestly, the game against the Red was closer. Probably the closest, <laughs> to be honest. Cloud9 came a little bit close, but I think the Red, I think it was game one, was probably the closest mm. game that Gambit actually had, and that may just be the shaky start of the tournament, first game in a while on LAN, I don't know. Well, that was, that's always been Gambit's uh, mm. way to go, right? Yeah. Day one, you almost that's get knocked out in the group stage. <laughs> yeah, the first one, but it shows just, I think Gambit has more convincing wins, the more respect they have for their opponent. With this Diamond Proxy was no nonsense. I mean, you kill me? Yeah. Really? You're gonna go that way? I'll pop my brilliant spot and just kill you back. Married life and rest seems to be working well for Diamond. Stunning Gambit performance this weekend, that's for sure. And we're gonna hear from them. We've got Shocks over in the arena to have a chat. Thank you very much. And I'm very happy to be joined by both Alex Ish and Genja. And a big round of applause from our audience here. A fantastic performance, and let me start by asking you, Alex, how good it must feel for you because you've been through so much with these guys. Does it feel like the puzzle has come together again, that this is the winning lineup that's going to do it? Uh, I think we won a lot of tournaments in this lineup, so we will win even more now. <laughs> very good to hear that. And I know that a lot of people want to hear from Genja, so I'm very happy to have him here, and you're going to act as a, a translator for that. Genja, you know, just tell me about what it's been like for you to experience to, to, to have Edward back 
in that lineup, you seem like a changed player. Ну, каково это иметь Эдварда в команде? Ты выглядишь как изменившийся игрок. Ну, не, неплохо. Мы, в принципе, после его возвращения, по крайней мере, пока у нас как бы все дела клеятся лучше, поэтому я думаю, пока все хорошо. Генжа uh, feels good, because after Edward coming back, everything is going uh, fine, and he thinks that it will be good. All right, and uh, I'd like to ask you just about the games. We saw that you did pull off a fantastic zigs this time around. Just tell us about that last game. It was very convincing in your favor. So, I don't know, like, the only thing I did was uh, being in, like, one kill on Peke in mid lane, and the other, like, coming to bot lane. But otherwise, like, Diamond was killing everyone everywhere, because he, I think he was raged because he got first blooded. So, he just wanted the revenge. <laughs> All right, I'd like to ask you, uh, Genja, of course, um, it was very hyped, the double lift versus the reckless matchup, and then he got to face you, and it... It seemed that he had a really hard time. How was your experience in lane versus him? Был большой как бы шум вокруг Реклиса против Double Lift, а теперь ты пришел против Реклиса. Каково тебе против него было стоять на линии? Ну я не скажу, что стоять было против Реклиса сложно. Это как бы не из-за того, что он плохо играл, у них просто игра не складывалась. Вообще как бы если у них не игра не шла, а так как если сравнить, там у них споры идут, кто из них лучше, не знаю. Я просто с Реклисом больше встречался, и мне кажется, что он сильнее играет. Возможно, я просто недооцениваю Double Lift. So, uh, he can't say that it was hard, but it was because uh, the game just didn't go well for Fnatic at all. And uh, he thinks that Reckless plays better, but maybe it's because he played against Reckless much more than against Double Lift. Okay, uh, one final question. Seemed like you could close it out a lot earlier than you eventually did. Was it just to prove a point? Mm, I don't know. I think Darian just loves to sit like this during the play. And so <laughs> we decided to play a bit more and to increase our KDA a bit. All right, well, fantastic performance here, fantastic tournament. Give it up one more time for Gamma Gaming, you guys! <laughs> fantastic stuff. Thank you very much. And we will, of course, be seeing you guys in Katowice, so we're looking forward to that. Um, thank you guys very much. We'll be going over to our analysis team. We need to tell, tell Alex and Gambit that the KDA they get here doesn't actually go into the LCS forum. But I am joined by Mithy, and we're going to break down the game just really quickly for you, and then just generally overall the entire tournament. Now, Mithy, what did you think of those two very one-sided games? Um, for the most part, I think uh, Diamond played very, very good and just like solo carried those two games. Yeah, I mean, he was always in the right place at the right time, it seemed. Especially in game two, he was able to always help Genja out and really help him succeed. And you know, what, what's your thoughts? As a support player, you see AD carries, you see their trends. What was your thoughts on Genja just sort of changing his style all of a sudden? Uh, I don't think it was much of a change from him. He just changed a bit his champion pool, but I, I think it's, he di didn't really ever have a style. He just like plays uh, good and safe, and that's all. Yeah, I mean, they did extremely well. What about the picks that we saw come in? I mean, we had Shivana get through, and we saw uh, in your games a little bit earlier on that that's not a champion you necessarily want to see get into the game. Um, Shivana top and jungle is very strong. They, they, put, they apply a lot of pressure on the map. They don't have any CC or anything, but the, the amount of split push they can put, put out as a top laner and basically being able to duel pretty much anything. And as a jungler, she, she, Shivana gets so tanky that she can dive and put a lot of pressure in the map too. So yeah, it's a champion you don't want to see or play against. Oh yeah, I, I don't want to ever go up against that. Um, but coming into the next couple of weeks, we have patch 3.14 going to be used for the actual promotion tournament for the group stages. Are you guys going to be watching these very carefully to see which team you guys want to go up against? Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, we want to pick, we are first pick, so we want to pick our weakest opponent. And uh, yeah, our lives are, st are at stake, so we will really study those games. Now, are you guys already prepared for 314? Have you guys been practicing quite a bit for it? Uh, no, not at all. I think I've only played one game of 3.14. Actually, I think I played maybe two. A, a good one for all in there, but you know, coming into the season, coming up for LCS, assuming you guys do requalify, are there any teams, or from at least from what you saw today with Gamut Fnatic, that look even stronger from them? Or from then, sorry? Um, it's hard to tell. Uh, Fnatic, and well, especially Fnatic, uh, has not been um, 
practicing as much as other amateur teams have been practicing. There was like two months break or something like that, right? And uh, Gambit played because they were hyped up. They got Edwards, so they played for a lot, but uh, Fnatic didn't. And um, it's hard to tell, but I think uh, Wolves have a, are very solid at the moment, team play-wise. And speaking of changes coming in, you know, with Edward coming back into Gambit, you guys obviously just went through a change yourself, becoming NIP. You even had more experience with that prior, coming from the Wizards into Lemon Dogs. Have you seen anything that's kind of carried over for Lemon Dogs that maybe you guys need to change coming up? Uh, out of the games, this tournament, uh, I don't think it's anything that's carrying from Lemon Dogs. I think it's like new team, new rules in a way. You just have to like uh, adapt to the meta and uh, change out some stuff, mostly communication anyway. And uh, uh, think like personal wise, just thinking and knowing what's up and not to get caught and all this kind of stuff. Good. Thank you very much, Smithy. I wish you guys the best of luck coming up to these next few weeks. But for now, we're going to head over to Paul, who's actually going to present to you guys the winners of today. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the prize presentation for the Intel Extreme Masters Cologne. And uh, with uh, Carmack right now. Uh, Carmack, it's uh, been a fantastic weekend, a record-breaking weekend. So uh, how has it been for you personally? Uh, fantastic. And uh, just one thing to say, after Joe Miller, actually, it's a shame we don't have a bear to uh, to give the checks and the trophy to to the Russians, because that would be quite fitting. Uh, somehow, I don't know how it's their tournament. Intellect Stream Masters is just where they shine. It always is. And what about the record numbers this weekend? It's been great, right? Well, uh, I have to say I'm very thankful to the audiences around the world watching this. We hit almost 300,000 uh, concurrent viewers watching that final. Uh, I thought uh, without the Americans we wouldn't be able to do it, but We've done it. Uh, uh, competition was fantastic and just a great weekend overall. Right. Fantastic. Uh, let's introduce you to the two teams who have won their competitions respectively here at the Intel Extreme Masters. The first team who have the, become the winners, the first amateur winners of the Intel Extreme Masters in Kelowna, a team who already beat SK Gaming and Ninjas in Pajamas. No small feat in either case. Ladies and gentlemen, the amateur champions for the Intel Extreme Masters Cologne are the Copenhagen Wolves. Our winners, of course, of 17,000. Let's hand them over. There we go. Lovely, wonderful. Uh, $17,000. And uh, Carmack, do the honors. And also the trophy. Ladies and gentlemen, your champions for the amateur, Copenhagen Wolves. And whilst the amateur championship was a very competitive time, the professional tournament was no less so. And the professional tournament in the end ended with two European teams, or at least not American teams, that's for sure. They came, they saw, but they did not conquer. They came up against a brick wall. That brick wall was the same team who come back year after year and time after time to the Intel Extreme Masters. They are, as Joe Miller said, the masters of the Intel Extreme Masters. The winners and champions of the Intel Extreme Masters Cologne 2013, Gambit Gaming! <laughs> and winners of the first prize of $18,500 and your champions for the Season 8 Intel Extreme Masters Cologne. Once more, ladies and gents, Gambit Gaming! Uh, it's also time to uh, point out as well that the MVP voting has just come to an end. I can exclusively reveal that Diamond Prox is the MVP for the Intel Extreme Masters as well. And that's just about all we've got time for from the Intel Extreme Masters here in Cologne. Hope you've enjoyed a fantastic weekend of League of Legends. Ifia, it's been an absolute blast, right? 
everything that uh, is going to come in our... Uh, we're going to Singapore on Tuesday. We have Katowice coming up. There's so many things. It's going to be amazing. And, and, this, guy, and this guy has been crazy the whole weekend. Uh, we're going to leave you with these wonderful images. The champions once more of the Intel Extreme Masters. Who else but Gambit Gaming?